Well, we're out here in the middle of the Australian bush. We're 30 metres from the house. Yeah, but it's still pretty scary. Well, we're out here looking for an ESP32 and we're going to update it with just this rubbish old phone. No internet out here. It doesn't even have a SIM card in it. And maybe, just maybe, this will be a new way for you to interact with this cheap IoT device. Ouch, 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 ouch. It took me months to code this framework for you. And today, I'm going to give it away to you for free and show you how to work it. Maybe you work in science or industry. Maybe you work in agriculture. Maybe you just want to update your Christmas lights or get your kettle to go. Today, you'll see how easy it can be to use any Wi-Fi capable device in the wild, such as a phone or tablet, to update the firmware and also download, delete or upload any other files to an ESP32. No mess, no fuss, no wires, and you'll be home in time for a cup of tea in the evening news. All right, let's go and find this IO2 device. Somewhere out here, there's an ESP32 waiting to be updated. Aha, here we go. Here's our project. And remember, we're out here in the middle of the great Australian outback. Well, we're in Tasmania on our house block. Uh, yeah, well, close. Uh, so the project is just an ESP32 with a DHT11 attached to it, and it's just measuring temperature every few seconds. It's not even logging it. It's just pushing it straight out to an RGB LED, which is blue if it's between 0 and 10 degrees. It's green, which it is at the moment, between 10 and 20 degrees, and it's red if it goes above 20 degrees. Let's get a little bit closer to the action. The project consists of three important code blocks. There's the main code, which you shouldn't need to touch for your project. It takes care of all the over-the-air updating. There's a file called mymain.h, which is where your code for your project lives. Setup becomes my setup, and loop becomes my loop. Other than that, have at it. There's a data file on a little FS partition on the ESP32 that holds the interface HTML files a style.css file, and any other files you might need for your project, such as data files for recording. Ideally, you should be able to upload, overwrite, delete, and download these files. And super ideally, you should be able to update the firmware for your actual project. We're going to do both today, all of this using a mobile phone that has no SIM and isn't part of any Wi-Fi network. The ESP32 itself is an access point, and we're going to log in directly using Wi-Fi. I'll screen record the phone as well, so you can see what's going on with that. First we find the access point. By default, your access point SSID. Once you've done that and logged in, you can then go to the IP for your project. So it's set initially 192.168.1963 and you're encouraged to change that as well. And here is the front page called main.html served up from the little FS data file partition. This page currently just displays the temperature as updated by the project every few seconds. If I spray some cold on it, the reading will change. If I press the access files button, then I get a list of files, which we'll look at in more detail in a while. Now, maybe this project and this code is ready to be updated. Firstly, some blinking is required. Also, and perhaps more importantly, none of the temperature data is currently being recorded. And so, back at the lab, I coded a new version of this remote project with these desirable updates. Blink in response to the ambient temperature and record the temp data to a file on the little FS file system partition. The new code and other updated files have been copied to this old Nokia Fire phone and we've traveled with these new files all the way out here to the middle of nowhere. And so I press update firmware. And here we are at another HTML page. This one asks for a password, which can be changed by you. It's currently set at your underscore custom underscore password underscore here. Then when I select choose file, I can navigate on my device to the new binary. I can press update. 
and after a few seconds the device is rebooted and we have our new firmware on the ESP32. Update successful, rebooting. See, the LED is now blinking. Fast, if it is at the start of the 10 second temperature range, and slow, if it's getting to the end of that range. At the moment, it's 11 degrees. If I spray that, that should drop down. And there you have blinking blue. The new firmware also has code that writes the temperature every few seconds to the little FS file partition. Let's go to the access file system page and we can see the new file is called mydata.txt. After capturing data for a few minutes or hours or days, we could download it. Let's do that. And we're going to have a look at it in a little bit. But also then we could delete file is deleted we go back to the file system it's not there and then it'll start again collecting data and then we can come back at some later time and collect the new data so if i refresh the page let's go back to the main page back to as access file system and there you see the my data dot text file has started again now if i go back to the main page one thing you'll also notice here is that the title says temperature monitor but it's now temperature monitor and save so it would be nice in fact to overwrite this actual file so if i go to access file system and i go to choose file there is the main html a new one and if i upload that and i go back to my main page it's now called temperature monitor and save I could also change the style. So if I choose a file and I go to style.css and upload that, we go from the powder blue background to the plum background. How cool is that? So there you have it, a hugely flexible framework for your IoT projects. I've tried to keep this video short as a toe in the ocean introduction to this IoT framework. What I'd really appreciate is engagement from you, the viewer. I don't normally say this, but please like and subscribe. It'll encourage the algorithm to put this code in front of more eyes. Share the video to anyone you think might use it. Maybe there's an oceanographer who's monitoring whale song at a depth of 102.7 meters. So yes, Wi-Fi does, does work at those depths, but with a reduced range. The firmware can be updated, the data collected, or without disturbing the science going on. And you can come back and update all of it anytime. Maybe you're out bush taking photos of any wildlife wandering past and you need to grab those pictures from time to time for science. Just fire up your Bushmaster, drive to the site, log into the device, and away you go. Too easy. Maybe you have an oasification project in the desert which is in need of an upgrade. Saddle up your camel. Take a phone or tablet to the ESP32 and you're good to reprogram it or collect the data or both. Camel not included. If you want me to do a deeper dive with the code, or maybe you want me to give you my impressions of the 600 plus pages of collaboration dialogue with ChatGPT on this project, then also leave a comment. There's a lot going on in this framework and I'm happy to share it with you. The link to that chat is on the blog and in the description below. All of this code is freely available on the blog and on GitHub as linked below in the description. Download it. Play with it and please leave a comment below. Thank you for your time today. That is the circuit working. See you next time. Good luck, little buddy. The house is in the other direction. Oh, dear.